cleans my guilt and pride Blood of Christ the crucified From your hands, your feet, your side Jesus, I trust in you We've been wondering about the timing of this um this thing that's going to happen up there in the Tennessee Valley. Why? How is this going to happen? You know, we've wondered about that, and God keeps giving us little bits and pieces, and I may have gotten another piece here, and I want to share it with you. This is um, a revelation that was given to Jonathan Bradford, and we actually named it uh, Midwestern Earthquake Divides the United States. You've heard about that, right? And uh, I've shared with you what I thought about it. In the beginning, I, I believe the Lord showed me very plainly that the great division down the middle of the United States was going to happen at the time of Armageddon, which is on the other end of the tribulation period. And I still believe that, okay? But I'm telling you, I believe, and more, more recently, even before I got this, I started to believe, now wait a minute, that doesn't mean there has to be one earthquake and one division of the continent. I believe that it's going to break open pretty soon. And um, and that this the earthquakes are going to continue and be very bad at the other end of the tribulation period. Because when and I told you then what my revelation in fact is in the book that uh, that God does this to America because America is joining with the nations at Armageddon to divide the land of Israel and take half of the city of Jerusalem. And that's when this great division happens in the United States. But it's going to happen before that. And listen to this revelation. It's you know it's like um, an earthquake fault doesn't just uh, have an earthquake one time and it may divide and, and it may get wider and then it may get wider you know and that's what I believe is going to happen with this this um, vision I think people have had a vision of it from the beginning to the end and sometimes they don't quite correlate and I think that's the reason okay well anyway Jonathan Bradford had this on uh, September the eighth. September of 08. So uh, that's that's very recent. So uh, um, he said, in a dream, I was with my wife pulling into a diner, and it was a, a mid-afternoon and a picture-perfect day. And I saw a car trailer with uh, brand new cars parked off to the side, and really have no idea why it caught my attention, but it did. Wonder if it might have something to do with the uh, auto industry. Uh, you know they're in big trouble right now, and they're uh, attempting to uh, cover themselves by joining together in some instances. Anyway, she said, uh, he said, we stopped in the diner to get something to eat, and we placed uh, our orders. And upon receiving our food, uh, I took my utensils out and was uh, just about to stick my spoon in my soup. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the table skidded across the floor. And uh, the floor buckled back and forth. And somehow I was able to keep my balance. And looking to make sure my wife was all right, I told her to wait in the diner. And I ran outside, thinking that some sort of bomb must have went off. And I noticed... um, The car trailer, again this time, and the cars on the trailer were extremely damaged. Glass blown out, dents in the exterior of the cars, and even some cars tipped over on the pavement, completely ruined. In other words, falling off of the the, uh, car hauler, you know, on the ground. Um, uh, You know, this, this earthquake he's talking about right here could just bring an end to the auto industry in the United States. And uh, I ran back in the diner with a uh, state of urgency. All I could think of was um, getting my wife to safety. And upon leaving the diner, my ears turned, my ears tuned in to the television playing in the background. And I heard this, quote, Midwest earthquake just rocked the region. Severe casualties. More as news develops, unquote. Then I woke up. And I asked the Lord to show me what it meant. He's going to go on and give some revelation here that I think is giving us some timing here, which we've asked for here recently. Isn't it interesting how the Lord comes through with things that help our timing and revelation of what's going to happen? I've I've told you in the past that I wondered if 
the Tennessee Valley was going to have a quake at the same time the New Madrid Fault was having a quake. Because we've got a picture of the uh, quakes that have happened in the last six months in the Tennessee Valley. And over on the New Madrid Fault on the other end of Tennessee, we've got a, a similar picture of a cluster of earthquakes happening over there. And um, and I've noticed that there is a connection further up of um, the fault that goes down the Tennessee Valley to the New Madrid Fault. And I thought, you know, Tennessee's probably a plate going from the New Madrid Fault over the, to the Tennessee Valley Fault. And uh, if that plate moves to separate the uh, New Madrid Fault, like we have heard so many times is going to happen, it can't help but do some movement over there on the Tennessee Valley. So I, you know, reasoned. It's again, it's reasoned. It's not necessarily what the Lord says, but I reasoned that, well, maybe the earthquake, these two earthquakes are going to happen together. We've been expecting something to happen in Tennessee Valley that would uh, run the people off from that area. Uh, this, this is not our plan, but we believe it's God's plan. And to make a refuge for people who are not necessarily afraid of earthquakes or um, <laughs> or nuclear fallout. Yeah. <laughs> um, either way, we believe that there's going to be a river there where there's no river right now. And uh, we believe that um, the people in that area are going to want to leave and think that nobody will value their property so much so that they will almost give it away. And we believe that's going to happen any rate, I think that God is confirming this and also giving some timing. Listening to the rest of uh, Jonathan's revelation here, he said it was exactly one day later, for some reason, when I had this other dream. Uh, I was in a George Bush press conference. Well, that could give you some timing right there. You know, I had a revelation years ago that I picked up these tools under a bush. <laughs> and they were, I, I explained to you that they were wrenches and um, screwdrivers and uh, and pliers and all that. And, of course, these are all for binding and loosing. That's what they do. Every one of the tools I saw in there was for binding and loosing. The Lord pointed that out to me. And it's talking about the authority that God has invested in us. He's given to us. I give you authority. Right? So we have this authority. But it was under a bush. Uh, and uh you know, after a few years, I realized, hey, he's talking about under George Bush, you know. So I, the Lord, by, by his grace, helped me to figure that out. Well, that's a timing. You know, how much how much longer is Bush going to stay in office? Well, we think, or some people think, until January. I'm not so sure. But anyway, some people think that. And... um Anyway, he found himself in a George Bush press conference, and he heard him say, quote, We have just brokered a deal with Israel to have a Palestinian state by the end of the year. Well, folks, the end of the year, this was 9 of 08 that he received this. Do you suppose he's talking about by the end of this year? I think so. I think that's what he's talking about. Of course, we could be wrong. could be next year. But... It also could be this year. And I think that that's what it's talking about. So, if he has brokered this deal, which they're attempting right now, and they've even claimed that they thought they would have it before the end of the year. So, I mean, this is not something that's not corroborated by what they've even spoken. They have spoken this, you see. So, he said, we've just brokered a deal with Israel to have a Palestinian state by the end of the year. And he said, just Broker, that gives you a timing. We just, it just now did it. So remember that, okay? I, I raised my hand quickly, and he acknowledged me. And I spoke up very blunt and said, President Bush, you can't do this. This is God's land and the land he gave to Abraham and to the Jews. The Jews are God's chosen people. Well, I have to put a little footnote here because I think a lot of people don't know that um, more precisely stated, a remnant of the Jews are God's chosen people. Did you know that? Did you know that they are chosen from the foundation of the world? It has nothing to do with whether they're saved right now or not. It has to do with the end. 
they're saved before the end. And they stay saved at the end. That's what makes them chosen, right? They bear fruit. So there is a remnant among the Jews that are God's chosen people. But the natural Jews were broken off of the olive tree called all Israel in Romans chapter 11. And the church was grafted in. So the chosen people of God, folks, are the born-again disciples of Jesus Christ who bear fruit. That's the chosen people of God, not lost Jews. Okay, So I'm just going to tell you that just as a little reminder here. Okay, And uh, he goes on to say, you are asking for trouble. <laughs> Please reconsider. Then President Bush, Bush smirked at me like saying, yeah, whatever. And uh, then immediately, listen to this. See, he said, I just brokered this deal. Okay. Then immediately I was taken up above the United States and I could see the East Coast, West Coast, and Gulf Coast. Then a huge crack began to form right at the top in the Midwest from Minnesota all the way down to Louisiana. The crack completely divided the United States in half. Whoa. Remember what I said? I was, I'd been wondering if the New Madrid fault would happen at the same time as the Tennessee Valley turned loose, which would cause people to flee that area just in case it did it again, right? I don't think anybody wants to be next to that crack, do you? After it does severe damage to the area, even busts the dams, rivers start, a river starts flowing through there or something like that. I know, I know there's some speculation in this, so I'm not prophesying, but it's kind of neat as God keeps putting the puzzle together for you, you know. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm wondering if this we've not just received something here that's giving us an identification of the timing. And, of course, we've always suspected that God was going to divide the United States uh, when the United States divided Israel. And it's not like we haven't had enough evidence of this, folks. Every time America's involved in taking Israel's land away and giving it to the pagans around them, uh, America gets judged. It just happens every time. We, we don't have to have our head in the sand to see this, you see. Um, he said, Then I heard a voice speak in all authority and power. Quote, Whatever happens to Israel happens to America. Unquote. Then I woke up and again asked the Lord for direction. Well, that's interesting. Interesting, to say the least. You know, that that um, here we are dividing Israel on this end of the tribulation, and God would divide the nation. And the Lord's already showed me on the other end of the tribulation, when the world is gathered together to divide Israel again, that there's going to be a division down the middle of the United States. Okay, so, at any rate, I don't believe, again, this is the last quake in this valley. I think he's talking about the first quake in this valley. This is actually going to do some division here. So, at any rate, um, let me say something to you about Rex Verone's prophecy that he gave a while back. Since I'm, in my mind, beginning to connect these two um, quakes, which maybe actually feel like one quake, Rex wrote me this. He said, I was studying this morning and reading Jeremiah 38 and 39, meditating on the word and praying in my spirit, and I heard the following word flow out of me. I was not praying about UBM or, or David. I was uh, praying in my spirit, and I knew not what I was praying for. I know, as the word began to flow, I felt Grief in my spirit and sadness for what I heard troubled me greatly. The church is asleep, and it has grieved him so. And here's the, here's the prophecy. Dave will move north after the month of songs. I have not read where there is such a month, nor did I research it this morning. But I had this word around 7 o'clock a.m., I uh, did not write it down, but it is very vivid in my heart and spirit, and I have not forgotten any of it from home until now, which is at the office. Okay, So we we did some research, and Sonny looked on the Internet, and he found um, this. It says, The Jewish, Jewish month of Elul, 
which is actually coincides pretty much with September, uh, might be considered an acronym for Song of Solomon, the month of songs, Elul. Maybe the month of songs then, in this year, uh, 2008, the first day of Elul starts on the first day of our September. Uh, the name of the month also is considered by many to be an acronym of the four words in King Solomon's famous Song of Songs. I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. Think about those words, folks. Do you know who it is that's escaping to the refuge here? It's the bride. I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. That's very interesting. So, we surmised that um, after September sometime that this would happen. Of course, we are after September right now. And at the end of this month, we'll still be after September. But the point he wanted to make was the month of songs. And I think this, this acronym is very interesting, you know, because God is going to separate his bride from the people for a, a, a moment, right? And then let me finish the prophecy uh, that Rex was given. He said, For I will cause a divide running north and south, and the east will part from the west, and a great abyss will be open. Well, I said to Rex, I said, Rex, wonder if that's the Tennessee Valley. He said, Well, I thought it was the New Madrid Fault. Well, I said, but the beginning of the prophecy says Dave will move north, and we know we're going to the Tennessee Valley. I wonder, Rex, if it's talking about both of them. He said, well, I don't know, but I thought it may, be, it may have been the New Madrid fault at the time. Okay, So let me read on. He says, uh, from this abyss will escape many evils and hardships. Boy, we know that. If you have an earthquake that cracks open the country like that, there's going to be lots and lots of, of land move. I mean, earthquakes many miles away that are going to kill people. You know, topple buildings, so on and so forth. Many evils and hardships. It will be as a dark cloud upon the earth, and pestilence shall engulf many. Diseases that have no cure and hurtful will come forth. Yet this camp, speaking, of course, of Dave and the people who moved north, right? Yet this camp and many others shall be a place of refreshing, refuge, and healing. And many will look and see the light of my presence and know that I am there. They will seek me early, and I will allow them to find me. Now is the time to come forth from Egypt. And think not of returning, for Egypt will be overrun and shall not stand. Yes, this country will be overrun and will not stand. And God will have places of refuge around this country for people to go to because of the cities. And I shared with you how that Brother Garrett had a dream about going and finding the refuge, and he was entering the Tennessee Valley. And he asked the Lord, Lord, why did you pick this place? And the Lord said, because of where it sits. And he said, well, where does it sit? And God said to him, it sits on an earthquake fault. And so he called me. And he said, David, this is what the Lord told me. This, he chose this because it's sitting on earth. I, I said, well, that makes sense, you know, because, you know, God will take you to places and protect you where nobody else will want to go. That's what makes it a refuge, you know. And as I was... Speaking to him on the phone, the Lord spoke the verse to me in Jeremiah 48. And Jeremiah 48 tells Moab to flee the cities because they're going to be destroyed. That's what it tells him. And, and the verse that he spoke to my mind from there, from that text, was, Be thou like unto the dove who makes her nest over the mouth of the abyss. Now, notice that... Uh, that uh, Rex in his prophecy spoke of an abyss. That's, that is a cracking open of an earthquake fault going down the side of those mountains, folks. I'm convinced that that's going to happen. I'm also convinced that we don't, we don't need to be there right now. At any rate, you have to do things in God's timing, right? 
In fact, I've told people, I don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> you know. And if you, again, I want to say this. You don't ever want to go there if you're not a disciple of Jesus Christ. If you're not committed, if you've not repented of your sins, you'd never want to go to any of these refuges that God is going to guide people to around this country or around the world. You don't want to go there. Because if you get in the midst of God's people and you haven't committed all, you're just like in an acid's fire. You know, and God will take you out because he's going to protect his holy people. Now, I don't care. It doesn't matter if you're a baby Christian. You don't have to be mature in all the knowledge of the kingdom, uh, nor have born all the fruit of the kingdom. But you need to be walking in the light that you have. And if you're not doing that, don't go there. Stay in the squalid cities, you know, until you learn to repent. So, anyway, um, I have another one here I want to share with you. Uh, concerning the same thing. It seems that God is putting the picture together for us here, I believe. Okay. Um, this is uh, from Brenda Shoneman. And um, it's also about the, the United States splitting. And she thinks it's the, around the same timing. I have, ha- I have been holding off on telling this dream for about a year. But I know that it is time for me to send it to you now. In big letters she has, now. Um, It all started after I woke one morning. I went into the library and pulled out a a plain piece of paper and began to draw what I had just seen. It was as if I was looking down from space at the United States of America. And right up the middle of the continent, I saw a great split. It looked as if a huge bolt of lightning had broken the earth open from the east coast of Texas, which is what? That's where Louisiana is, folks. All the way up through the Midwest. Then I looked over towards New York and surrounding states, and I saw a great area of darkness. Wonder if that includes DC? Most likely, huh? Wouldn't it? <laughs> you know, God's uh, speaks about pouring out His darkness on the seat of the beast. <laughs> I thought, well, that's pretty, you know, pretty good. I think that's, yeah, these are the people that planned it. Let them have some darkness there, you know. Everything there seemed as if there was no lights and no communication. I looked over towards California. And I saw a large area of land fall into the ocean there between California and Mexico. Well, that's interesting. You know, I mean, a while ago we were connecting the New Madrid with something that is pre-tribulation and possibly also the Tennessee Valley judgment uh, as a pre-tribulation. Now, she's seeing this. And she, now I admit that this could happen on the other end of the tribulation, but she also looks across on the other coast over there and a piece of California falls off in the ocean, right? Well, it's an awful, you know, when you're splitting, you know, something, maybe miles, I don't know. Uh, I know that some people have had uh, dreams of uh, 40, 50 mile separation uh, in that fault zone, you know, but I don't think, I don't know that it's going to be that bad on this end, I'm talking on this end of the tribulation period, okay, but at any rate, again, this is speculation, it was like a great landslide and a great wave took off towards the islands and Hawaii, hmm, and they were, they were covered with water and completely destroyed, so a a tidal wave has, has been sent from California to the islands. Uh, and a, just remember, if, you, if Hawaii is destroyed, uh, the American fleet there is destroyed. That would severely weaken America, would it not? And they were covered with water and completely destroyed. The water was traveling in a direction that was totally against the usual current. Up around the areas of Colorado and Utah and Wyoming, things were silent. And still, it seemed to be like a safe zone there. And we know parts of Utah are not going to be silent. There are parts of Utah that God's going to judge, you know. And um, 
Then I looked back up the middle of the continent where that great split was in the earth. It had smoke and fire rising out of it. It was as if an earthquake had torn the continent right up the middle. There were volcanoes erupting in the north, and great clouds of suffocating smoke were covering everything in their path, and America was devastated. Again, I admit that this could be the one on the other end, but it also could be the one on this end, so we'll see. Then I saw a helicopter with the president on board. Don't know if she said what president or not. Don't know. That would make a difference, wouldn't it? Uh, with the president on board, and they were uh, taking him to another safe area that had not been destroyed. This is where the president set up headquarters to run the country. Communications coming from Washington or the Pentagon were bleak and not working properly. So that kind of lets you know that they were hit too. Business was not as usual because of the darkness in that area. The president set up meetings with Canada, Alaska, and Mexico for immediate communication of what to do with the millions of people that had been affected by the earthquake. The problem was that there were very few places found that could handle the influx of homeless and wounded. The destruction was just too wide. People were helping their neighbors and trying to deal with what was happening as best as possible. I knew that this was the end. And for a moment I thought, what am I still doing here? She said that because she thought she was going in a pre-trib rapture. And she didn't believe this was pre-trib. That's why she said this. Okay. What am I still doing here? A lot of people are going to get that question about that time, don't you think? What am I still doing here? I thought we were going to escape this. These people lied to us, you know. (laughs) She said, I saw great tent cities being erected to house those that had been displaced. Now, now, notice that she believed this was a pre-trib event here. Uh, which would, of course, made this split the same one that Jonathan saw. Okay, I saw great tent cities erected to house those that had been displaced. In fact, we've got tent cities around the country right now, folks. Curfews were set all across America. Families uh, from city to city and state to state were unable to communicate with each other because there were no communication devices working. No one knew if their family members... In other states, were dead or alive. If people tried to go to downtown or the next community, they were sent back to their homes. Aha! This gives you an idea. Remember we talked about whatever happened up there in Tennessee Valley, that if you didn't move quick, you weren't going to be able to move. The door was going to close behind us. This fits perfectly because they're talking about martial law, you see, with the, with the New Madrid Earthquake, and possibly Tennessee Valley earthquake, uh, talking about uh, martial law that shuts the country down. Barri- barriers were at all main intersections with checkpoints in place. Military and police were at the checkpoints and going through neighborhoods. There were complete restrictions on any travel to work, school, or church. So, again... You better move when God says move. And uh, don't take a whole lot of time thinking about it or trying to take everything with you. Okay? Move before this, before the door closes. If God tells you to go to the refuge, go there and don't wait because the door's going to close. Okay? Military were going from block to block and house to house to look for weapons and food and water. They were going to put it in, a, in one place and give it out as they saw fit. People were locking themselves in their homes and trying to hide from the military in fear of having everything that they had stored taken away. Interesting. You ain't going to be able to trust in nothing, folks, because they're going to take all your storage, right? Everything you stored up upon earth. In other words, you're at the mercy of God again. It all comes back to that. God is going to make sure that uh, people don't trust in any of the gods of Egypt and that they learn 
to at least the elect, learn to put their trust in God alone. Uh, it did no good to try and keep anything from them. They would break the doors down on homes. And uh, then they beat up the people for trying to hide. Uh, there were large trucks that were taking families and splitting them up and taking the people to the tent cities. Once again, folks, we're talking about captivity here. Remember all the dreams we had about the captivity? Well, here it is. People wanted to stay in their homes, but the military would would not let them. If you would not leave, then they forced you to. There was no compassion. The public began to rebel, and then the local police were called to get involved with the military. They were still short of force. Then I witnessed as gang-type militia began to develop among groups of young people, young men and women that were armed with guns, and I witnessed as these young people <clears throat> took control over areas and even shot and killed people that wouldn't do what they said to do. <clears throat> Many old people were just simply shot. It was like watching exterminators kill roaches or rats. There was such shortage of everything and such fear that these people were <clears throat> completely out of control. Everything that uh, was looted and people were hurting other people in ways that was indescribable. And there were Christians here. She adds that in big bold print. There were Christians here. <laughs> Exclamation point. The rapture had not, she has that in big letters too, happened yet. I knew that this was during tribulation, perhaps the beginning. Mm hmm. So, you know, there's a lot of people going to get their eyes open, just like this lady did. She got it from a vision, thank God. But there's people going to figure out, uh huh, they've lied to me. No pre trib rapture. There's not, you can't find it in the scriptures, folks. You just can't find it there. You know, go, go to the front of our site. If you have a question on it, go to the front of our site and, uh, read the chapter, um, Rapture When in Hidden Manna, or if you want lots of lots of verses, or if you want to listen to it spoken, um, on the front of our site, there is, uh, some videos, Hidden Manna for the End Times. Listen to the first set of videos. I guarantee you, mo many of you will see there is no such thing as a pre-trib rapture. And then you'll start getting ready for the tribulation period. I'm talking about ready spiritually, getting your heart ready, getting the Word of God in your heart, getting prepared to go through a trial in which you're going to have to learn to walk by faith. Okay. This is very important to God. He doesn't want the filthy people that you think is the church in his kingdom right now. He is going to clean them up first. And uh, she goes on, I've always believed that the church would be taken out at the beginning of the seven-year tribulation period. But after that dream, I was convinced that there was the possibility of a mid-tribulation rapture for the church. Nope, sorry, you're wrong again. <laughs> That's okay. Well, we want it as soon as possible, right? If we don't get it, if we can't have a preacher, let's at least have a mid. -trib. No, not gonna happen. <laughs> I saw Christians sneaking over to houses and comforting old people and those that were in great fear and lacking understanding of what to do. They prayed with those people, and many began to repent and turn their hearts to Jesus Christ. Hey, that's worth an earthquake right there, ain't it? You know, praise God. You know. Let's have an earthquake tomorrow if it will bring us a revival. But don't worry. God's not going to knock off anybody who was predestined from the foundation of the world before they get saved, is he? Stop and think about it, folks. He knows what he's doing, you know. It's not going to happen. The only part that perplexed me was that I don't remember seeing any children. Note, with the exception of one little girl that led me through the whole dream. She was at every position of the dream and watched everything with me. She never spoke. She was simply present, and her face was covered with ash, and she was in sackcloth, and her countenance was sorrowful. I wonder if she represented the church. I don't know. I did see torture. Christians were being mocked 
as if it were God's fault that this had happened. And the masses wanted them tortured and uh, made a spectacle of them. And um, I was dragged out of my house and stripped naked and marched down my street in front of all my neighbors while they shouted and spit on me and threw things at me. I was embarrassed, but only for a moment. I remembered that God was still on the throne and that this would soon be over. My children were not with me. I think the boys had been taken away. And I was beaten and hit repeatedly, and then I woke up. So why am I sharing this now? Because I feel that we should take serious the pending possibility of a massive time of darkness here in America. I have not told people about this dream because maybe it was just for me. I don't know. But I do feel that it was a warning to me and whoever I tell. I am not an alarmist. I have um, faith in God and still hold to the fact that I had always believed in the church being out of here before the tribulation period. And I do, of course, question this now. I feel that we should prepare our homes for the possibility of needing uh, water and non-perishable food and have some cash in small bills on hand. Of course, you see, all that stuff may not do you any good if you have to leave your home and and um, qu- quite a bit of that is going to have to happen. Plenty of um, flashlight batteries and so on and so forth. Some people are, are preparing in the natural in some cases. Um, as we read earlier, uh, the, these things are going to be taken away from people. You know, they're going to come and take your supplies that you stored up, right? And uh, let's see. If you, ah, she makes a good point here. She said, if you have made plans to go to another place like Colorado or Utah, or then you would have to go before the roads were closed. You know, this is going to happen pretty close, very quickly. You know, they're prepared. They've brought in the military now. There's, I understand, some quite a bit of military in uh, Georgia, not too far from us here. Um, and, and the doors are going to close pretty quick after something like this happens, you know. Uh, I pray that this would never happen, she says. However, I also know that God will not do anything until he has revealed it to his prophets. I have never called myself a prophet, nor will I begin now. However, I can't tell you how many things I have dreamed about and have now seen them come to pass repeatedly. The track record on what he shows me has been on target so far. I don't know if you will listen to what I have written here, but I believe that there will come a day, if the Lord tarries, that we are here at the beginning of the tribulation, that many people will not be able to get to their pastor or church, family. They will, in some cases, that's a blessing, you know. And um, they will will become fearful if they haven't at least prepared their hearts. You know, folks, it's not the pastor of the church we need to get to. It's the Bible. Get to the Bible. Get to it. Get it in your heart quick. It tells you how to live. The Lord will be with you then, right? So many people, just like the people who trust in the economy, trust in the government, they trust in their pastor and trust in their church, but they're not going to be standing with you when you enter the kingdom. You're going to be standing on your own there before the Lord, right? So it's you that has to be right with God. You know, forget the bun- the rest of them. You got to be right with God. This is going to be a personal thing here. You know, they will become fearful if they haven't at least prepared their hearts. Those that know the the truth and know the signs of the time that we are in must reach those that are still unaware of how near to the end of this age we are. That's so true, folks. So many people are going to be in massive confusion because they really weren't planning on this. Psychologically, they weren't planning on this. And um, they're going to need the message to get out. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to get the message out by the grace of God. And so are a lot of other people that God's preparing around the country and around the world. And I pray to always give you the truth and never hold back on the necessity of our knowing 
where we stand with Jesus. I also pray to protect all of you and uh, give you all the strength that you may need to stay diligent in his service. We must begin to pray together for protection and guidance from the Lord. Amen. Amen. So that's that revelation, and I'd say it's um, very good and right on track. Praise God. We have to get prepared. Uh, We get prepared by, first of all, being a people who are not under the curse. There's nothing you can do, no place you can go that will cause you to escape the curse if you're under it. That's the point, you know. The devil is everywhere. And he can take you out anywhere, too. So, I mean, we need to be walking holy before God. We need to be repented. We need to be doing what God um, has called us to do. We need to have the Word in our heart. We need to be walking as disciples of Christ. In other words, we're studying the Master to learn how it is that we're supposed to walk on this earth. We need to um, be walking in the light as he is in the light so that the blood cleanses us of all unrighteousness. In other words, you are not under the curse of the destroyer that's about to pass over. Uh, these United States and this world, right? And um, if you've got the blood on your doorposts and you're walking under the blood, uh, praise be to God. That's good. No matter where you are, you're under the blood. And, of course, part of being under the blood is being where God wants you to be, not being disobedient. If you're disobedient, you may come under judgment, even though you may have been walking under the blood. Um, But if you're disobedient, to the Lord when he speaks to you, or if you're stubborn and rebellious when people who are in authority in the kingdom, not necessarily with tags and titles and stuff, you know, obviously that doesn't mean anything, uh, but people who are in authority in the kingdom come and tell you and warn you. And if you're stubborn and rebellious and you don't listen, well, then you can't claim to be under the blood. And there may not be a Passover at your house, right? So... Again, we need to go back to what we were saying earlier. We have to eat all of the lamb, right? The head, the mind of Christ, right? The heart, all of the lamb. He is the Word. If we put the Word in our heart, we submit to the Word by faith in Him, He will protect us. He will bless us. We have a Passover, and our lamb's been sacrificed, Jesus Christ. And we need to eat all the lamb now, the Word of God, right? And uh, God's made a great provision for us to escape. And um, God's going to warn those that should escape. Of course, there are going to be some people, like the mixed multitude, that um, came out into the wilderness with the Israelites. And these people didn't live all that long. You know, they brought, they brought a stumbling to the children of Israel, and God judged them. And, of course, uh, I mentioned earlier about uh, Korah, Dathan, and Abiram rebellion in the wilderness. Uh, false leaders who wanted to make themselves leaders. They didn't live long in the wilderness, did they? You know, that's where we're going, folks. I mean, a lot of the people that now claim to be leaders in Christianity, they, if they go out into the wilderness with the people of God, they ain't going to make it through. I can tell you right now, God's going to judge them. Many people have claimed to be apostles and prophets and teachers and so on and so forth. But they ordained themselves. They weren't ordained by an apostle of the Lord, as in the Bible. They weren't sent. They just went. And uh, they're going to meet their maker out there in the wilderness. And um, judgment's going to fall, especially when they usurp the authority that God is raising up. Um, God's going to raise up his man-child ministry, his David ministry, his Moses ministry, and um, he's going to raise up his two-witness ministry, and uh, they are going to raise up the five-fold ministry, and uh, God's going to restore true leadership in the wilderness for the true people of God. And um, these usurpers, they're not going to make it very far. Praise be to God. They've lied to God's people. They, they went when they weren't sent, and they have shared this false pre-trib, all flyaway rapture with God's people because the false prophets all through the Bible always did that. They were prosperity prophets. They were pillow prophets, you know. 
and they've always preached the peace, prosperity for God's people, even when they were rebellious. And um, that's their nature. Of course, God's going to judge them. So, praise be to God. We have an opportunity. God is showing us the way, and um, I'm just so happy about it because I, I, I'm looking forward to God's people walking the way they walked 2,000 years ago uh, when they learned from the from the Master's lips, you know, how it was that uh, the kingdom was formed and how it was um, to walk righteously as a disciple of Christ, right? And so, once again, praise be to God. can quench my thirsting soul Purest water make me whole Let your streams of mercy flow Oh Jesus, I trust in you Though the mountains fall into the sea, though the rivers rise, I still believe. For your mercy stands and your word is true, oh Jesus, I trust in you.